So my name is Dr Sarah Monks. Um, I teach art history at the University of East Anglia in Norwich in the UK. Um, I'm a specialist on British art, but recently I've been looking at American art in the 18th and early 19th centuries. And I'm here today to talk about Edward Hicks's painting, Peaceable Kingdom, from about 1829, 1830. Edward Hicks was born in 1780, so right in the middle of the American Revolution, or American War of Independence, um, in Bucks County, uh, about 20, 25 miles from Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Son of devout Quakers, he was brought up very much within the kind of Quaker religion, um, and was apprenticed as a teenager to a coachmaker, where he began to learn how to paint coaches. Yeah, So very much a kind of craft-based, industrial, approach to painting. His religion meant that um, he struggled with uh, you know, the act of painting and um, had to find a way for himself to turn painting to his needs, basically his religious beliefs. Um, and it's not really until possibly the, the age of 40 that we see him starting to paint these kinds of pictures such as Peaceful Kingdom, pictures in which we get so much of his kind of religious belief, his moral kinds of mission coming through, uh, the development of a very particular kind of visual language. And it's the Peaceable Kingdom paintings, I think there are more than 60 of these paintings um, of this subject matter by him, uh, where we really see that coming through. It's re related to um, you know, Quaker beliefs, it's related to particular kinds of rural practice um, and art making outside of uh, the cities, basically. Um, so, you know, the, the, all sorts of ways in which it um, raises questions for us when thinking about American art. On the right, we see, as we see in the other Peaceable Kingdom series, images of the biblical prophecy from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 6 to 9, okay, which is the prophecy of God's mission to Jerusalem through a Messiah will come to earth and bring the people and the animals of the world together. And so there will be peace on earth. And that is such an important um, text for the Quakers, for Puritans, for early America, basically, you know, because it suggests, it's so suggestive of the very reason why those people came to America, that idea that, you know, of, of escaping from strife um, in England in particular and settling in America in the 17th century um, and finding in this, you know, apparently virgin land um, the peace that they believed should be on earth. And so we see in the, on the right-hand side of the canvas the animals of the world, the wild kind of animals brought together, um, as in the prophecy, the uh, wolf lying with the lamb, the leopard, you know, with the kid. We, we can see there's, there's a small little kid goat. On the left-hand side, it's interesting because we see this group of figures um, dressed very much as in this plain style, the plain style of Quakers. Um, a gathering of what they called the Society of Friends, who have come together with words, banners around them that are of the mottos which speak of their faith. Above them, uh, we see this kind of globe with uh, Christ and the Apostles, but it's interesting that they're so far back. They're, so, they're actually almost in another kind of dimension in the picture. Instead, the Quakers, it's the emphasis upon the word and their, and their discussions with each other. And in particular, there's a banner at the top uh, which says, mind the light within, which is really central to Quaker belief. This idea of the light within or the inner light. If we um, are peaceful and reflective, and meditate upon um, you know, religious writings, particularly upon biblical scripture, that we might um, realize that the light of God within us. It's interesting that that is shown, that banner um, within, the, within the image, um, in combination with a particular figure um, that we see down towards the bottom edge of the group, who is seen in profile with a handkerchief in his hand. This figure is the figure of the artist's cousin, Elias Hicks, who had recently been the cause of the first major split 
in the American Quaker belief in groups. In the year that it, we think this picture was painted, he was heard by the very young Walt Whitman giving a sermon in which he talked about how the faith was within us, that it's us as individuals who are the origins of religion. And that kind of thinking was quite controversial for Quakers, for Orthodox Quakers. Hicks, the artist, um, you know, I guess for familiar reasons amongst others, um, clearly kind of sided with his cousin, um, uh, who was renowned for the kind of strenuous character of his sermons, this, um, uh, you know, kind of accounts of him sweating profusely as he uh, strained to communicate um, this important interpretation of the world that he had to offer um, and of human experience in the world, that it was about us as individuals. Um, so hence the handkerchief in his hand. I think that's a kind of symbol um, of him. It's quite in, you know, unusual to see that kind of, I mean, portraiture, essentially. We know that Hicks did do some portraits, but um, within the Peaceable Kingdom series. Now, I said earlier that I would talk a little bit about the boy, um, the figure of the boy. He's very unusual, and you know, um, you know, I think it's um, perhaps one of the first things that we notice is that he has um, a kind of adult face, okay? Uh, something like a kind of five o'clock shadow. Um, and I think that is deliberate. I don't think this is a mistake. Um, I think it is because the Quaker interpretation, and through Hicks as well, um, of Christ is that Christ was but a model for us, okay? Um, that he is not the saviour as much as the example, the pattern, as Hicks called it, for us as individuals to follow. But I, so I think the fact that we see, you know, this figure of the child with the adult face is actually the suggestion, perhaps, that it's us, it's Hicks, um, it's one of his viewers, um, one of his Quaker friends or family, um, that it's meant to speak to that central kind of... Um, belief that, and idea that Hicks communicated through his sermons. It's an example of what we would now call folk art, um, which is, I think, an interesting but problematic term, because it's really a, an early 20th century um, invention. Uh, the notion of folk art is not one that Hicks himself would really have been familiar with. Uh, there are good reasons to think in these uh, paintings, the Peaceful Kingdom paintings, that he's deliberately painting in a kind of plain and simple style that would really have accorded with the Quaker kind of um, relationship to speech. But nonetheless, um, he would not have thought of himself as a folk artist, okay? Um, as far as we can tell, he would have thought of himself as a Quaker minister producing a kind of visual sermon for his um, viewers, yeah? In terms of kind of studying American art, um, this issue, though, of folk art is so central. I mean, I speak as an art historian. I think it's quite hard to look and to know what to say about um, folk art um, works like this um, uh, because they come from um, other kinds of traditions. They relate perhaps to different ways of life, not the artist's way of life. They might not be made in a studio. They might be made with very different kinds of materials. I mean, I'm struck by Hick's frame here with its kind of um, inscription on it, which is like a piece of carpentry. You know, his cousin uh, had, was a carpenter. He'd been a coachmaker. I mean, knew how to use wood and to make things from wood. It's very much a material object. Um, so it's not quite like, uh, you know, the oil paintings that we might expect to see on the walls of, you know, our art museums. But nevertheless, it's got so much, I think, to say to us about, um, a, you know, experience, uh, belief, um, li life, um, uh, you know, kind of identity um, during this period in America and particularly in Philadelphia. So it's really the job is for us to... I suppose, kind of interpret it on its own terms to find a way of engaging with it, um, which allows it to um, be as um, yeah, kind of articulate and significant as it as it is. Mm -hmm.